Hey everybody, Brian McCumber here from Tech Money Talks. I am pumped up because today we have a great special guest on the podcast. We are fortunate to have John X. Paul, aka Jonathan Smith, as a special guest on the show. And if you don't know who he is, then you're missing out big time because John is an eight figure multi million dollar producer in drop shipping and e com. John continues to raise the bar and he's been keeping it real the whole time. If you're interested in starting an online business to make extra money, better save this episode in your back pocket and listen to it over and over over again because the stories and the tips you're going to learn here will give you the opportunity to quickly launch your own business to help your bank account grow fast. John has been absolutely killing it in drop shipping and has been mentoring others how to successfully do the same. He has an awesome presence on Instagram highlighting his success and his students' success in drop shipping, all while doing a great job calling out and fending off the fakes that are copying his screenshots trying to call it their own. Time is money and everyone is looking to get a piece of his time, and I am so happy to have him on the show today. John, thanks for joining us, man. How's it going? Thanks for having me, man. Uh, it's going great. Glad we were finally able to get together and, and uh, do this podcast. Totally, totally. Same here, man. So yeah, I'd say to kick things off uh, for the audience, can you share your journey into dropshipping? Yeah, of course. I'd be happy to. So uh, my journey started about two and a half years ago. Uh, I was working as an executive chef at a restaurant. I had actually been in the kitchen industry, the restaurant industry for a little over a decade, pretty much my whole adult life. And, wow. um, as an executive chef, my salary peaked at about $55,000 and I was not happy with that. I, I basically just crunched the numbers and I was like, it's going to take me four years to afford a vacation for my family. It's going to take me this long to do like to accomplish different goals in my life. And I would basically never be able to live the life that I, I wanted to live doing that, uh, doing that job, even though I enjoyed it. And so I um, started talking with some of my friends about, you know, how could I make some more money? And one of my buddies was like, hey, man, you should try drop shipping. It's low risk, uh, low risk, like a really small investment up front. Uh, you basically run your own business. You get to run it how you want. And uh, I was like, all right, well, that sounds interesting. You know, I'll look at this. Maybe I'll make a few hundred bucks or something. And uh, uh -huh. I spent about a month doing research, just uh, browsing Facebook groups, watching YouTube videos, and felt like I got a pretty good handle on it in about a month. And I started launching ads. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so it was about two and a half years ago, I started launching ads. And within my first two weeks, I found a product that was profitable. Once, once the money started coming in, I was like, holy crap, this is, this is real. Like, if I can find one winning product, then why can't I find 10? And uh, so I just kept working and working. Basically, as a chef, uh, as executive chef, I was working uh, about 70 to 80 hours a week because uh, wow. I was a salary position and um, I was just doing 12 to 15 hour days. It was, it was pretty insane, but it was what I was used to. It was the lifestyle I was used to living. And, uh, yeah. and then I would do three or four hours at night on, on my drop shipping business. And, and this wow. kept going on for about three months. So I was sleeping like three or four hours a night for three months. And uh, I told myself that if I was able to triple my income, that I would quit my job as a chef. And so in my third month drop shipping, I did that. I was making about $500 a day profit and I put my two week notice in. Um, and since then I haven't looked back. So, and actually that wow. year, that year I ended up do, make, I ended up making more money than the entire restaurant did from my drop shipping business. And they have... <laughs> God. And they have they have, more, they have 100 employees, and I was by myself with the dropshipping business. So amazing! So it was pretty incredible. And about I think I did uh, about seven million in my first uh, my first year. Yeah, it was pretty incredible. Like it was just blowing my mind. Like I, I developed a system based on my my history in restaurants. Like you have to have a very systematic approach to everything that you do, uh, and get things done orderly and and like the right I don't know right time frame. And so I just applied that same yeah. mindset to to this, this business model. And it, it just clicked for me. Like it just started working and, and yeah, so that's, wow. that's how it started. And I went to, amazing. Uh, was that back in two? So that was like 2016. Yeah. I started at the end of 20, it was like December, 2016. And then I think my first, my first full year was 2017. So, wow, man, that's amazing stuff. And I, and I'm glad you, you described on like how, you know, how you progressed into it because people from the outside looking in, they, they look at, you know, the big numbers, you know, so like you said, man, the first year, $7 million, that's, 
that's great. You know, those are crazy numbers. That, that's just amazing. And but people outside looking in will look at it immediately think, you know, oh, this is like some get rich quick scheme right. and stuff like yeah. that. You know, like, would you describe it as such? No, unfortunately, it does get lumped in with a lot of those those kind of scams um, just because it does get a lot of a, a similar attention. Like it does. It is. Uh, very appealing to that market of people that are attracted to get rich, uh, get rich quick schemes. Um, but the, you know, the majority of people that get into drop shipping don't make any money and, and that's, you know, very unfortunate, but it's the truth. And the, and the reason is, is because a lot of these people are trying to get rich quick and they're, they're not running it like, like a legitimate business, but the people that run it like a legitimate business are the ones that are actually making money and doing very well. Uh, my, my initial investment, I actually didn't put any money into the business. I used the, like my family credit card. We only had, my family only had one credit card at the time. So mm -hmm. I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to use $500 of my credit limit for this business. And so that was my, my investment into the business was 500 bucks. And, um, it's just about making wow. the right decisions like every single day and making sure that you're moving, progressing every day. And it just, it, it snowballs, it compounds. Like if you're, if you're making 20% profit every day, then that money over the course of a year is going to grow considerably. For sure. Yeah. And I'm glad that you that you touched on on the level of work and treating it like a business, because I think that's where where people fall short is that, uh, you know, they think they could just, you know, jump in and, and that it's like, you know, get rich quick. But I mean, uh, it's pretty much it's like, you know, you get out of it what you put into it. And right. uh and to hear your story, man, that that's just so awesome for sure. <laughs> that's great. And it actually reminds me. So, like, you know, speaking of that, and then uh, to touch on it, like, you know, you you did a really good job about. And and actually, let me even take a step back. Sure. You know, the point of the podcast, you know, related to tech money talks, is to even help people avoid the the fakes that are out there. So. Uh, I, I try to do my best to to bring a guest on the show that have been keeping it real and and to help avoid the fakes out there. And in in following you, I, you know, I think you've done a good job as well, uh, you know, helping people to to avoid the fakes, even to the extent because, you know, you're pro you're crushing it out there in, in drop shipping and, and, you know, you're sharing your success. And, you know, you're fending off the people that are copying your screenshots, calling it their own. And, you know, we don't need to call any of them out by name because we don't need to give them any exposure. But, I mean, I caught on to some of them. Even one that I almost brought, you know, thought about bringing on the show. And oh, it wasn't wow. until you pointed uh, them out that what they were doing, I was just like, oh, my God. Like, I think you, you kind of saved <laughs> kind of <laughs> saved from, uh, you know, they try to make things that are believable, but I was wondering if you can share a little bit more about that. There's, yeah, there's a lot of snakes uh, out there. And when, when I when I started, um, like, I really honestly, I was extremely hesitant to, you know, go kind of the influencer route. And uh, because I knew that that, I knew it was a tainted industry. Like, it's, it's really, it's, it's really in a bad state. And, uh, I told my, my media manager, I hired, I basically put a videographer, a photographer on, on salary when I started this. And I was like, the most important thing is that like, we just keep it real and I don't do anything yeah. that damages my integrity. I don't want to sell people false dreams. I don't want to like, just be like a hype man. I, I want to, I want to be realistic and tell people like, this is actually how it is. And, um, and that was the only way that I felt good doing it. And the only way that like yeah. I can continue to post every day on my Instagram is, is because I feel like I'm offering real value to people. And, um, you know, any, anybody that's making guarantees, anybody that promises you that they're going to give you a winning product or give you a store that is going to make you money or anybody that's making guarantees like that is, is scamming you. And that's, that's just a fact. Mm -hmm. You can't make guarantees like that. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I've, I've gone through hundreds, if not thousands of winning products and they can die any day. I don't know why anybody would like promise like here, this store is going to make you money. It's just not realistic. So, um, and, and the, because drop shipping gets lumped in with the get rich quick crowd, um, yeah. that crowd typically is pretty gullible and they are attracted to shiny things, nice cars. Um, and yeah. it just, 
and there's people out there that, that recognize that and saw an opportunity to take advantage of, uh, of innocent and gullible people. So yeah. really it's kind of a wake up call, not just like, I don't know, it's a wake up call for the industry as a whole. Like the, the people that are following influencers need to do their due diligence and not just like send somebody money that you've, you've seen on Instagram. Like you need to do your research and make sure this person's running a legitimate business and make sure that they're, they're honest and trustworthy and they have references that can be verified. And I mean, it's, it just comes down to common sense decisions. Um, and, and unfortunately, yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, I don't, like you said, it's it's not a good idea to call people out, and and that's kind of the route I've taken as well. Like I don't like calling people out unless they've ripped my stuff. If somebody rips my stuff, then I'm going to come after you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which is awesome to watch. So yeah, you know, if you're copying my stuff because that's personal, but um, yeah, you know the the industry. I'd say like. I don't know, eight out of 10 of the influencers probably aren't being honest with you. So just be careful. That's really just, be, yeah. you know, make common sense decisions. If it sounds too good to be true, then it is. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. I mean, hopefully the audience catches on to that and appreciates that. I mean, you know, really there's, you know, kind of scammers in, in all industries right. and, you know, here in the e com or online business space, it's a little bit more prevalent because, you know, the opportunity is, is actually pretty huge. And, you know, it's a great opportunity for anybody, you know, to start their own business. I mean, now you don't have to be tech savvy and you have, you know, the tools at your fingertips. It's just more about treating it like a business and taking action and then hopefully find a mentor that is real uh, that can help take you to, you know, to the next step and then the step after that. Yeah. But no, I'd say, yeah, I mean, you, you spoke very well about it on your, you, on your YouTube channel, the one of the videos there. So I'd say for the audience, you know, be sure to, to catch John on, on his YouTube channel as well. You know, really good stuff. And yeah, you know what? The way you called them out, like on the Instagram story was just awesome. I think that <laughs> <laughs> really powerful. Yeah, I, I uh, enjoyed it. And yeah, I mean, you know, it helped uh, it helped me, you know, one person that I was considering and I was just like, oh, man, geez, I didn't uh, realize that. So uh, great stuff there. So, yeah, I mean, for the audience, just kind of um, do your due diligence. And uh, like I said, you know, with with the podcast, I try to bring on the people that have been that have been keeping it real and, and crushing it. And, you know, you want to find mentors that 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 are like that to help take you to the next step. Don't just blindly, you know, follow somebody on Instagram or, or YouTube and consider it real without doing your research. Yeah. Uh, great, great stuff, man, for sure. Another thing that I noticed, and I thought this was actually really powerful. So when uh, it was one of your recent posts on Instagram and you, and you talked about the, the spine surgery that, that you had at the age of 14, and I'm just kind of summarizing, you kind of mentioned that, uh, you know, they, they said that you wouldn't be able to run or jump exercise and then now, you know, fast forward to today, uh, I mean, for the audience, you can't see him. But I mean, if you check him out on, on Instagram, he's, you know, he's in really great shape. I mean, like a bodybuilder. So I was wondering if you could uh, share with the audience more about that story. Yeah, of course. Um, so, yeah, this is like one of the events that I guess kind of defined who I am in a way. And so I, I grew up playing sports year round. Like my dad was uh, heavily into baseball and basketball and, and was always encouraging me to get involved. And so it was like a year round thing for me. I was always in, on a sports team and, and, you know, doing some, you know, whatever athletic activity I could. Um, and so around the age of 13, 14, uh, I started experiencing really bad. What I didn't know it was nerve pain, but I just started, my legs started hurting. And that's all I could like tell anybody was like, my legs hurt. And, you know, the coaches would just be like, suck it up. You know, you're running, it's going to hurt. Um, <laughs> and, and yeah. uh, no, there's something like really wrong with my legs. Like, I don't know what it is. And it was for a while, it was like, I thought something was wrong with my legs. I didn't know it was my back. And uh, finally, my mom listened to me and she took me to, it took like four different doctors to figure out what was wrong. Um, because wow. I hadn't, I hadn't sustained any injuries. It was, um, it was a genetic defect basically where my, uh, the L4 and L5 vertebrae had not fused together. And they had actually slipped so far apart that it was yanking my yanking on my spinal cord. Um, 
and like threatening to basically rip it in half. I could have, I, if I had fallen down at an awkward angle, I could have been paralyzed for the rest of my life uh, from the waist wow. down. So anyways, they scheduled like an emergency surgery. It was, I think the surgery lasted 14 hours. It was ridiculous. Um, I actually remember waking wow. up, waking up on the, uh, on the table at, right after the surgery, the, I have like, I guess I have a really fast metabolism. The, whatever they used to knock me out wore off like right after the surgery and when they were wheeling me into the room for the recovery room. And I woke up and it was like, I can still remember this, like the feeling of how bad it felt to have my back cut open with like screws freshly drilled into it. It was like the worst thing ever. Anyway, oh man. So, um, I was in the hospital for like a month or something after that. And, um, could barely walk. I had to learn how to walk again. It was, it was a really traumatic experience basically. So, yeah, After that, um, I wasn't able to play sports. I wasn't able to do anything. Doctors told me I couldn't, you know, run, jump, twist, lift, do anything like that. But I wouldn't be paralyzed, so I had something to be thankful for. Basically, that was that was what they told mm-hmm. me. Um, and wow. over the course of the next um, like twelve years or so, my like muscles and my back and my legs and everything atrophied to the point where. Um, like if your spinal erectors aren't strong enough, if your core muscles aren't strong enough, uh, your spine ends up picking up a lot of the weight from like of just of your body of just moving and everything. And so it was putting a lot of un- like stress on with a surgery site. And so a lot of my nerve pain actually came back. And uh, so I spent, I actually got to the point, actually got to the point where I couldn't walk without a cane. And, um, cause I would just like fall over my, my leg would go numb and I would just fall over. And, wow. um, yeah. So one day I just like, I, I decided I couldn't live that way anymore. Like I just couldn't, it wasn't worth it. I was like, I'd rather be paralyzed than live like this. At least I'd have, you know, at least I could say I tried to, to break free of these like chains that I'm living with. And, uh, so I went on Craigslist, bought uh, a weight set or actually I got, I got a free weight set on Craigslist. Uh, really cheap, like rusted out free weights from somebody that was moving. And uh, just started, <laughs> I just started lifting, man. Like I did the one thing that I wasn't supposed to do. I started deadlifting. And to this day, that's my favorite lift because because of that. <laughs> as I strengthened yeah. my back, as I strengthened my core, the pain started to go away. And I started to like feel like me again. And uh, yeah, it was a really powerful experience to that. Just like breaking through those mental barriers that um, had yeah. been in me for over a decade. Like I can't do these things. I can't do these things. I have a bad back. That's who I am. And I was mm. able to, you know, kind of break free of that and overcome that. And since then I've just, I think for the first, my first two years lifting, I didn't take a single rest day. I was terrified of stopping. Um, it was literally yeah. seven days a week, every single day, uh, because it was, I was seeing progress and I just, I had to keep, I had to keep working out. Um, and yeah, now, now I can deadlift, wow. um, almost 600 pounds and, um, do it with technically a broken back, which is pretty cool. So, wow. wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's a, no, amazing, it's a, amazing story. And, you know, just kind of speaks to, to what you've gone through and, you know, taking that adversity and turning it into, you know, the best thing that you can do. And, uh, you know, how, how, how do you, think has has that kind of also had a like that mindset have have an impact on like your business yeah 100 percent um and even in the way like i manage when i was working in the restaurant industry like people would come to me with a problem and they'd make fun of me because my first answer would just be like fix it or figure it out like just do it and (laughs) i didn't understand why people couldn't do that they would just wanted to complain and and so that's the way i approach my business too is like there's always going to be problems. There's always going to be hurdles and things that you have to overcome. And you just yeah. have to decide ahead of time that you know that you're going to figure it out. You're going to power through it. And and that's and as long as you do, you're going to be successful. Like you just, you keep yeah. solving problems, you're going to be successful. It's the way it works. No, that's awesome. And and that's powerful. And even in this uh, e-com space, like, you know, what advice would you give to to people that are just getting started in, in dropshipping? Because one of the things I see, especially when they're getting started and say they're product testing and things like that, and, you know, maybe they're, they're you know, spending money at first as opposed to, you know, seeing the big profits like like they see other people. But, uh, but really it's about having that, 
that no quit attitude and just plowing through and figuring it out. Um, because at one point, if you, if, you know, if you stay consistent, if you just keep plugging away, it's going to work for you and you find that winning product. Um, what, what advice would you give to, uh, to like a newbie like that? Yeah. So, I mean, I guess it's very similar to when I started lifting weights where uh, I was plowing through a problem, but at the same time I had to be extremely smart about the way I was going about it. I had to make sure my form was perfect or I could seriously hurt myself. And so the same thing with business, you need to have that, uh, kind of like bull mentality where you're going to power through this, but you also have to maintain your intelligence and you have to be smart and make good decisions. You can't just throw money at a problem and expect it to work. Um, a lot of people okay. don't, what I see a lot of newbies, a lot of things that they struggle with is they're afraid to test things. They doubt themselves, I guess, is the biggest problem. A lot of people don't don't trust their instincts and don't trust their gut. Uh, and, mm. and that's what leads them to like following people that they shouldn't be following on social media and listening to really bad advice. Um, and, and that's because they don't learn learn how to trust themselves. And a lot of the the process that I teach with product research, um, even in testing and scaling has to do with learning how to trust your gut instinct and, uh, being willing to kind of break away from the crowd and the trend and, and try and test your own theories. Uh, and that's where I see a lot of my own success. And that's where a lot of my students see their success is when they start to trust themselves and they stop listening to the crowd, so to speak. That's awesome. Yeah. Great yeah. advice, man. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So hopefully the audience is catching on to that, that it's, it's having that right attitude uh, and being smart about it, which is key. So, yeah, I mean, uh, not just, you know, throwing money at it, thinking that you're going to get uh, get the returns back. Because, yeah, I mean, I've seen uh, people that have been wondering, hey, I keep, you know, or, you know, trying to force a product to be a winning product by throwing money at it when it's just not yeah. a winning product. That's, that's <laughs> happens all and, uh, the Half my clients. Yeah. That, that <laughs> Yeah, I see people do that. So very well said. You know, that's that's really good. So hopefully the audience catches on to that. You know, one of the things that I did notice, which I thought was really cool, because in some of your posts, because I actually have a German shepherd as well. His name is Bear. And uh, he's just, for me, he's just the coolest dog in, in the world. And, you know, my family and kids love him. And I saw that you have uh, a German shepherd as well that, that you spend some time with. So I was wondering if you could uh, speak a little bit about that. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, great dogs. We uh, my, we actually have two. So uh, my my wife and kids are in Puerto Rico right now with uh, with one of our dogs. And then I have one of the German Shepherds up here in Toronto with me. So I'm up in Toronto setting up a, a new warehouse for my fulfillment company, Titan 3PL. And uh, wow. and while because I've been I'm, I knew I was going to be traveling a lot this year, I wanted there to be a, like a protective force <laughs> at home with the family. And Definitely. So we uh, I did some research and found this, uh, this training school in the States, in Washington State. It's called Kraftwerk Canine. And they are the top German Shepherd school in the U.S. And so what they do is they actually import dogs from Germany. They breed them. They train them. Um, I mean, that's like their whole – that's what they do. They're the, they're the best in the industry. And wow. uh, so you can buy a fully trained, basically, guard dog fam- slash family dog uh, from them. And, uh, so the one that we have in Puerto Rico, his name's Danny. Uh, he cost $18,000, but he's like fully trained, uh, only listens to German commands. Um, and he's also just the sweetest dog in the world. So (laughs) worth, worth every penny. Like he's so amazing. Um, and then two months ago, uh, we got another one, uh, a female and she's a black German shepherd. I got her from the same school, but she was uh, younger. So she was $9,000. She hadn't received as much training as, as Danny did. Um, mm-hmm. and so she travels with me up here in Canada and keeps me company while I'm, while I'm on the road. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and did you, is, does she have her own Instagram account? Did I catch yeah. that? Yeah, they both do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Yeah, that's cool. So, uh, but you know what? So for the audience, so let's talk maybe, let's dive into some strategies. And, and actually you touched on a really good topic that seems to be like a hot topic lately. So one of the things that I've noticed related to product sourcing 
Uh, even a lot of the drop shippers that are now crushing it, you know, a lot of them are now talking about, you know, straying away from AliExpress, focusing on product sourcing. Um, so I was wondering if, if you could maybe talk a little bit more uh, about that. Yeah, of course. So essentially, the first problem, like people are going to run into when you become successful in drop shipping, you're going to run into two problems very quickly. The first first one's likely to be a payment processor issue. <laughs> because when your drop shipping business takes <laughs> off, you end up scaling very quickly, and that scares the processors away. Uh, they usually hold your money for a long time. That's that's typically the first problem you run into, and the, the second one is usually problem with suppliers or like the quality of the product starts to decline over time. And um, this happened to me in my first year, so it became uh, a priority right. to fix these. I I, I was like, if I'm going to be doing this long term we have to find a way to fix these problems. And uh, so I, I actually went to China and I met with a couple of agents that I was working with. Um, and one of them, I had like a really good feeling. We, we hit it off really well. Um, his name's Alex. And we kind of came up with this master plan to create our own fulfillment and sourcing agency where we would be in control of, of the quality of the products. And uh, wow. And we would also be able to be in control of like the shipping times. So we could eliminate the two biggest issues with product sourcing. Uh, so we still use a lot of the same manufacturers from AliExpress, Alibaba, 1688. Uh, but we're able to inspect the product quality beforehand to make sure that we can reduce customer disputes and chargebacks. Uh, and we're able to cut the shipping time down to uh, like for the if we're shipping to the U.S. from China, it typically takes seven to 12 days now, which is a drastic improvement over uh, AliExpress where you're going to see three to four weeks uh, on average. Wow. So, um, yeah, so huge improvements uh, in those areas. And we're now we're setting up a warehouse in Toronto uh, where we can store our like winning kind of viral products and shipping yeah. time in less than five days to the U S. So um, we're really just working on kind of evolving the industry and making it better so that, uh, we don't have to deal with these problems that that everybody keeps running into. Uh, yeah, and actually, over the past week, uh, actually this last week, it was two days ago, I had a meeting with a uh, an individual who's been in the manufacturing and sourcing industry for about eighteen years, and uh, talking about creating a partnership with him and bringing in some like super high end products uh, from Europe and uh, also from China, but from like higher quality manufacturers. And storing those in our warehouse and offering them to our to our clients, so we'd have exclusive products that nobody else could get on uh, AliExpress or or other uh, other avenues. So yeah, uh, we're just constantly wow, trying to awesome. work on the process. If you if you try to scale with AliExpress, not only do you have to manually plug the orders in, um, but it's just the quality is always terrible. You're working with suppliers that don't care about your business, and uh, the shipping time is just is just really horrendous. So. As soon as you scale up, you definitely need to work with a legitimate fulfillment agency, whether it's, you know, there's there's some good ones out there. Obviously, I would recommend my own. But, um, you yeah. know, just if, if you want to treat this like a real business, you need to work with a company that actually cares about your success long term. And uh, so that's what that's what we do. And uh, it's pretty exciting. No, that's, yeah, really awesome. Yeah. Thanks for explaining that. And, you know, for the audience listening, like, so I guess what are the type of clients that you're looking for, for, uh, for sourcing and, you know, maybe for audience that, that are newbies, like at, at what point in their, I guess, drop shipping journey, should they be thinking about product sourcing as, uh, as they yeah, begin to grow in their business. So we, uh, rather than kind of going the mass adoption route and trying to get as many clients as possible, we've been focusing on some like higher end, higher volume clients and just providing a premium service. Um, but we recently beefed up our staff. So we're taking on some more clients uh, as well. I guess once you start processing 20 or more orders a day, it's probably a good time to switch over to a fulfillment agency like Titan 3PL. Um, we have uh, API integration for your store. So basically the orders are automatically exported to our, to our warehouse where we can pack and ship them and then upload the tracking back into your store automatically. And it also gets sent to your customer. So the, the entire back end of the business is fully automated. And we're all also able to save you money because we go directly to the manufacturer. And my business partner is Chinese, so he's able to negotiate a lot better than 
the average drop shipper can with uh, the pricing. So hopefully the audience caught on to that because I think I heard you mention that also on your, uh, I think it was on your YouTube channel, 20 sales per day. Now, the type of products that you're working with, is it more high-end product or mid-range or? Um, um, well, basically we just, uh, you tell us what you need and we go get it for you. So whatever you're already working with, we just, uh, we jump in that process with you and, and, and help you get it for a better price. Um, and then we're able to obviously improve the quality control measures and uh, speed up your shipping time as well. So uh, yeah, awesome. we, we can source anything. You just let us know what you need and, and we jump in there and get it for you. Man, that is really awesome. So hopefully the audience is catching on to that and, and more and more. So, I mean, product sourcing is just, uh, yeah, I mean, now that over the past year or so, you know, as, as drop more and more drop shippers are, are reaching that level of success, you know, they're, they're, they're thinking down this path and John already being do this for, what is it? Almost three years now and crushing it all the way through, you know, treating it like a business and having things set up. So, uh, so really good stuff there. And I did catch on, is, is that Facebook group that you have? Is that still open for people to join if they have question, further questions about that stuff? Yeah, so we have, I have two Facebook groups. I have um, just like a basic free one that any, anybody can join. It's, uh, it's called Ecom Titans. And then we have a VIP Facebook group for my paid clients. So anybody that has purchased my training or a mentorship with me is, is in that VIP group um, where I obviously don't hold back on it's basically just like an open mentorship for everybody at that point where you can ask any question, post screenshots, do whatever you need for me. I go in there and answer questions every day. Um, the, obviously like the free kind of basic entry level group, I don't give away all of my secrets in there, but it's definitely a, good, <laughs> a little community. Um, yeah. And a good stepping stone, I guess, into the, the paid one once you scale up to that point where you're able to afford that investment. No, that's awesome, man. And, uh, you know, one other thing, you know, related to strategy. So um, I was wondering if you could speak to, because I think, you know, when you talked about your journey into dropshipping and, and the level of success and the, the volume that, that, that you're selling at, what, what approach did you take? So I know, you know, either working with a general store, a niche store, single product store, what was your approach? Um, so I've always, I've always worked with general stores and um, they've worked great for me. I, I think it's unless you're going like a white label or branded route, it doesn't make sense to do a single product store. You're basically backing yourself into a corner by doing that. Um, you know, our, our approach to drop shipping um, is quite simple and that's, that's why it works. So I've, everything we do is, is automated except for the product. So we test the same way every time we scale the same way every time we have a system that I, that we know works. Um, as wow. long as, as long as you plug in the right product, it works. And so if 99% of the system is the same every time, then you basically simplified the business and all you have to do is cycle the products through that system until something clicks and then it go and then it goes to the next stage in that funnel and it, and it just gets scaled up. And so all of our energy and our effort is spent on product research. Um, and then we just, Anything that meets our like criteria for what a winning product could be, uh, we mm -hmm. plug it into that system, and and if it works, it gets scaled up and it makes us money. And if not, then we dump it and get rid of it. Uh, so we definitely don't have an emotional attachment to products. We just our approach is purely volume based um, and just testing as much as we can. Hopefully, the audience caught on to that, which is you know the words that you use, you know, being systematic about it shows. Like even with your background, like you said, you you know. A chef, you know, you, you're familiar with systems, process, you know, a process to be efficient, produce quality results, and and you apply that to your business, and now it's just at a level of you know repeat, 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 and then um, you know yeah. you got that system down, which is just awesome. So for for the audience that's curious about the system, thought I saw that that you have a course uh, related to that. Is that where you kind of teach uh, that stuff? I do, yeah, I. I I was, I was extremely, just as I was reluctant to get into the influencer uh, industry, I was very, very reluctant to get into like selling courses or training. Um, I even, I wouldn't even tell my closest friends like how I was running my stores. I shared nothing <laughs> with anybody because, because it worked so well. I didn't want any competition. I was like, I can't, I can't share this. It's making me way too much money. 
I am not gonna, I am not letting the word out there on how I do things. And, uh, and then I started the fulfillment company, Titan 3PL. And I had this light bulb moment where I was like, if I had a hundred people using my method and sourcing through my fulfillment company, I would never have to work again. Like I would make <laughs> yeah. so much more money on the back end um, yeah. and, and create a business that I could sell in five or six years for like a big payout. Um, and, and once I had that moment, I was like, okay, I guess I can create a training for people, teach them how to use my methods and then try to funnel them into my, my fulfillment agency. So I'm teaching people how to make money. I'm helping them like actually make money and they're helping me make money by using my fulfillment company. So there's a synergy here, um, where I, I'm not creating competition, I'm creating clients and, and that, and yeah. they're benefiting, and they're benefiting from that process as well. So that was the, awesome. the reason why I was willing to do this and to share my methods is because I had, I had, you know, ulterior motives and that was to grow my fulfillment agency. So everybody wins essentially. And, uh, what, what's the name of the course called? How can people find that? Sure. Yes. The course is called uh, keys to consistency. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you just find the link in my profile and, and see the course in there. Uh, I'm sure you could probably just Google the name of the course too. So keys to consistency. Um, that's like the rarest thing in this industry is consistency. The drop shippers that find a, a winning product and scale it up and show off six figure, seven figure screenshots. Those are a dime a dozen. Um, but guys that consistently crush seven figures every month for years, <laughs> Those guys, you can't find those guys. And yeah, and the reason is because they don't have a system in place that's repeatable. And that's what I've created is a system that's repeatable. Every store I've ever launched hit seven figures within the first wow. two months since I developed these these strategies. And so the system. Wow. It, just, wow. it, it works and, and it's 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 very simple and easy to execute as well. Wow, that's huge. And hopefully the audience is, is catching on to that. So I'd say definitely worth worth checking out. And then what he's talking about here, I mean, seven figure months. I mean, this is huge, consistently just amazing thing. So that's why just like the intro, I was like, you know, I mean, John spending his time here on the podcast today is just really awesome because he's been really great and just absolutely crushing it at, at a really high level, which, which is just so awesome. And actually that even reminds me because it, uh, you're going to be uh, sharing the stage with a lot of other uh, e-commerce professionals that are that are crushing it as well. I remember catching on to that underground earners event that's happening in Beverly Hills. And some of our previous guests, like uh, the Beast of Ecom, Harry Coleman, uh, Van Dennis, and uh, uh, Justin Wall is going to be a future guest on the, on the show as well. But, I mean, all of you guys have been crushing it uh, in this space and you're going to be sharing the stage as well. Um, do you want to speak a little bit about, uh, your involvement there? Uh, yeah. So, uh, Jordan Welch reached out to me a couple months ago and invited me to speak at the event. Um, I was definitely, uh, happy to do so. And, you know, I, I, uh, I haven't met any of these guys in person, so I'm really excited to meet and network with them. You know, that I've been to other masterminds and meetups in the past and always the, the biggest value that I get out of these things is the networking. Um, you know, obviously there's going to be tons of value shared in the training. I always overshare when yeah. I do events, like I always give away too much, <laughs> uh, it's in my nature, but the, uh, the most valuable thing that I get from events is, is, is networking. Like I, I always end up starting a new business with somebody that I meet at these events. It's really funny. And, and uh, so I'm always I'm really excited to go there and, and, and meet these guys and uh, share some value with with all the people that sign up and, and join us. I think it's in two weeks. So it's coming up pretty soon. Yeah, I'd say for the audience, keep a lookout for that for sure. I mean, really great stuff. You know, it reminded me of because the, the level of success that you have. And I remember, you know, so when you described in the beginning that you started out putting, uh, you know, four hours because that's what you had time to put into yeah. Uh, but now, like, since you earned your freedom and, you know, you're you're having these, you know, seven figure months, what what does a day in your life uh, look like now? Um, now, you know, I have been very fortunate to bring some extremely talented guys onto my team who are able to execute things in a way that, 
you know, is acceptable to me that the quality um, is, is there and they're able to help continue yeah. the business for me. So I don't have to work. I mean, when I left the restaurant, I was working 10 to 12 hours a day because that's what it was like. I was used to doing that. So I was like, I'm just going to keep working 10, 12, 15 hours a day. I'm just going to do it on e-com. And I did that for the first year. Um, and uh, over time, I mean, I've hired and fired a lot of people. Uh, I'm very picky with who I let on my team, but when I find the right person, <laughs> when I find the right yeah. person, I take really good care of them. I pay them a lot of money, and uh, and they in turn take really good care of me and take really good care of the business too. So, uh, I guess that's awesome. Day in the life of me, just you know, wake up, walk the dog, go to the gym, maybe spend five or six hours on the laptop answering emails, going to the Facebook group, and uh, doing product research I, is probably my biggest investment in this business into the drop shipping side of things is still product research. I'm very heavy on that. I don't, I don't think product research should ever be outsourced to a VA or anything like that because it's the biggest money driver in the business is finding many products. Everything else is wow. easy. Finding the winner is the hard part. So that's, that's the, where I decide to put my energy because it makes me the most money. Uh, yeah. What about even the Facebook scaling and stuff like that? Do you out? Yeah, so I do, I, do uh, I manage the ads. I, I do the scaling, but I'd say that that takes up maybe 10 to 20 minutes of my day. It, it's really not that time consuming. I have my team create, like if we're running lookalike audiences or anything like that, I have them create those for me. Um, but as far as managing budgets and doing like the more aggressive scaling stuff, uh, that takes me like maybe 10 or 12, 20 minutes a day. So it's pretty. And for advertising. So is, is Facebook like your primary thing or do you also use uh, Google ads as well? Yeah. Or Facebook and Instagram other? are primary drivers. Uh, we use Google, yeah. but only for uh, retargeting purposes. Um, oh, okay. I just haven't, I haven't seen Google. Uh, I haven't seen the potential to scale with Google like I have with Facebook. Uh, it just doesn't mm. fit our approach to marketing. I know there's guys out there that do well with Google, but it's just not something that uh, has worked for our, very well for us in the past when it comes to scaling. So we use it for retargeting mm. it extremely well with our retargeting. I think we get like a 6x ROAS on, on our Google ads Um but it just doesn't scale very wow. well. So awesome, man. Well, hey, this is really good stuff. And uh, yeah, like I was going to say, the best way to follow you is that on Instagram and YouTube? Yeah, definitely on Instagram and uh, and on YouTube, I'm trying to get the YouTube audience to grow. So give me a <laughs> subscribe there for sure. I'm, I'm just trying to share valuable information, cut through the, through the BS. That's the approach I like to yeah. take. I don't want to waste anybody's time. I just want to deliver value and and let you get on with your life um, so that I can get on with mine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, for sure. Yeah, I'd say definitely so for the audience. Definitely check out. And then your tag name is John X Paul, right? Yeah, John X Paul. Yep. Yeah, I'd yep. say for the audience, definitely uh, be sure to follow John on, on Instagram and, and check out his YouTube channel because the videos that he is pushing out there, yeah, are quality for sure. Well, man, I really appreciate uh, your time here. You dropped a lot of great value. And uh, oh, I actually just remembered, is it cool to, to uh, follow up with you maybe later in the year to see how things are going? Yeah, let's do it, man. For sure. That'd be awesome, man, for sure. Well, uh, as, as we wrap things up, I, I'd like to give you a chance to uh, leave some closing remarks for the audience. So I'll let you take it away. Uh, I guess the best thing that you guys, if you're interested in drop shipping, um, try to find a voice that resonates the most with you uh, and stick to that one person. If you try to combine too many methods into your approach, you are going to fail. I see that uh, all the time with my clients. They, they end up listening to three or four different people trying to combine this mishmash uh, version of strategy and uh, it ends up failing. So make sure that if you're following somebody and you're using the strategies that you're implementing them 100%, um, don't try to overcomplicate the process. This industry is very simple. It is about finding winning products because winning products will sell almost no matter what. And, uh, and that's it, guys. Keep it simple. Uh, make good decisions every day, and, you, and you're going to see success in the long run. Awesome stuff, man, for sure. Man, this is so great. Hey, John, I really appreciate your time here today, and uh, thanks for delivering value, brother. Yeah, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. So I want to thank you for listening to this episode of Tech Money Talks. I hope everything was helpful and thought-provoking and somewhat entertaining. 
If you want to learn more about this topic, please let me know so I know what to focus on in future episodes. My goal is to teach people how to make money with the opportunities that technology can bring. And if you like this episode, please show your support by subscribing, leaving an awesome review. And in the meantime, you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. My tag name is Tech Money Talks. Thanks again. I'll talk to you in the next episode. Peace.